Hey everybody, this is Alex Reset from alexresetcoder.com, and I've been getting kind of rusty, um, at least in stuff that's not JavaScript or like SQL, which is for work I've mainly been dabbling in SQL, and for fun I always just love playing in JavaScript, but you know, pretty much everything else I haven't had as much time to play with lately, so I wanted to make sure that I don't get too rusty, so I'm going to start doing some code word challenges, and I figured I might as well record them. Um, so I think I'm going to be trying to get back on the Rust bandwagon. I always just kind of want to like learn more Rust just because if like, you know, if I can do it in Rust, I can pretty much do it in any language is generally my, my feeling about it. So let's take a look here. So I want to start with some, it's been a while since I've done some Rust, like probably like three, four months since I've really written any Rust code. So let's start something with something really easy. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, convert a string to a number. Okay, now I'll tell you straight up, I probably have forgotten most of Rust other than like basic syntax. So let's try this out. Okay, so this cut is inspired. Try that one too. We need a function that can transform a string into a number. What ways of achieving this do you know? No, don't worry. All inputs will be strings. And every string is a perfectly valid representation of an integral number. Okay. So we're passing in a string pointer. Okay, so we're not passing in like a string object and we need to return it as a uh, integer. Okay, and you know what? Even something as simple as that, I'm gonna apply it to Google when it comes to Rust. I know exactly what I would do with JavaScript or Python uh, and how to cast it, but how to cast it in Rust, um, not sure, Rust cast. So what I want to do is cast because I'm changing the type. So basically, again, also what I want to do is just talk about like how I'm thinking about how I'm Googling things. So what I know what I want to do, I want to take that string and just turn it into an integer. Rust cast. And then again, in Rust, they're very particular about types because I could do string, but string to an int like they show there is a little bit different than a string pointer. So add stir to an int. See, that's what I want. Okay. Okay, so I'll start off with, you know, the top, top search requests. Here we go. Let me just skip to the end result here. And okay, well, that shows me how to turn it to a string. That's all fine. Okay, oh, I see. This is converting it to a string object. So they want to convert it to a string object first. Okay, and then my string dot parse. And then you're saying you're parsing it specifically into a integer, a 32-bit integer. And then you're unwrapping it because it's probably like, I forget what they call them, like, uh, not necessarily a future, an option, because it might fail. Um, and then that'll unwrap the the, the, prompt, the option type. Okay, so cool. Specify the type to parse with with the TurboFish operator shown above, the explicit or explicit type and annotation. Let's do it that way. I like that way better. I, that's, that just seems more intuitive to me. Okay, so essentially the... Basically, essentially, what we need to do is first turn the string pointer into a string. Really, not a string object, a string struct, because there's not really objects in Rust. Okay, so we would just take the, and we'll just say, um, let uh, my, we're gonna let my string. Which will be a, a string type. Um, we'll want that to equal s dot to string. Okay. And yeah, I don't even really need the typo because it just that would be it figured that out because I'm assigning a value. So this does not leave any reason for type errors. Okay, and then once I have the string, then what we want to do is cast the string to an integer. Okay, so then we'll just say um, let result, which should be of a type i32 integer, a 32-bit integer. Um, again, if it would u32 would be an unsigned 32-bit integer, meaning it can't be negative. Okay, well, as we can see, that would be bad because we do have negative numbers here. Um, and then that's just going to be um, my string dot parse dot unwrap. Okay, let me 
Let me just double check. Yep. Okay, so again, based on what I'm doing, I'm saying, hey, parse it. And it's going to parse based on the typing of the variable. If I don't want to type the variable, or I'm not going to, so for example, if I just want to return the value, so let's say I want to do this. Well, in that case, the return, well, maybe because maybe the return value is typed, my, that might still work. So let's try that out. I'm curious. So let's run the test. Oh, okay, so that works. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so again, and again, the takeaways here as far as like how Rust works, again, is just remember that basically at stir means a string pointer. Um, and string point is just, it's a pointer to like a raw string. So there's not really any like methods on it. So you don't have these like two methods that you can like to string or to this or to that. So the only thing you really have there is you have a basic stir can you, you convert it to a string. You do have this method. Um, so we convert it to that string because that string object has a lot more stuff that we can use, such as this parse method to parse it into some other type. Um, and since this function is typed as an I32, it's going to parse it into an I32. And this is, again, this is just unwrapping that process because, again, there's a chance that this parse may fail in case we gave it the wrong value. So that means it can't, it can't absolutely return um, a, a, a I32. So it has to wrap it in what's called an option because there's a chance there's an error. And in that case, I, you don't just get the value back. You get the option that might have an error or the thing inside of it. So we got to unwrap the error or I could have just done pattern matching or whatever. Okay, so let's do the actual attempt. Yay. Okay, so then let's submit it. Cool. Okay, let's just take a look at some of these other situations. Okay. Now here they omitted the return keyword because in Rust, it, basically the last line is implied to be returned. Okay, kind of like Ruby. I'm just so used to like Python and JavaScript where I have to like explicitly say return. Um, okay, so as parse dot unwrap. Okay, so I guess you could just parse the string. Okay, I guess we didn't need to convert it to a string object. So there we go. So this is and this is again good form when you're doing like code wars. Like go back and like read the other solutions and see if you can gleam and and like read between the lines and learn new things. So like here I'm realizing, okay, well S is the string pointer. Okay, so when I was looking at this, I figured, okay, well I guess we have to convert to the string first. But I guess you don't have to. Okay, because this works. Okay, let's see what else we can see here. And this is unwrap or zero so it just means it'll return zero if it fails um but otherwise it's pretty much the same thing as that and they're except they're explicitly saying what they're typing it to which technically they didn't have to but they, you could um so there's anything else that's good well expect is just another method instead of unwrap so unwrap just basically either throws the error or or gives you the thing expect allows you to like kind of have a message with your error you said not to worry that's everything is perfect <laughs> okay cute um okay and then this case here the, here's like the example where i said like you could do pattern matching so here they're saying okay hey if it's okay because basically what happens is that if the thing is successful when you use an option the output gets returned as like this and within an okay tuple and so basically then you have to unwrap the tuple and if it's an error tuple then it prints the error Okay, so that's that's cool. Um, this seems okay. I see what they're doing there. So they're saying okay, they're taking the i32 type, and apparently the type itself has this method called from string radix. So the idea is like create an i32 from a string. They pass it the string. I'm not quite sure what this argument refers to. Uh, I'm assuming it's like number of decimal places or something like that. And then unwrap, although there shouldn't be decimal places on an I32. Okay, so got it. And then they're here saying here S, they're trimming any white space. So this is the same thing. They're just adding the additional like trimming in case there's any white space on the string. Not a bad idea. Cool. But yeah, that's kind of how you, you learn from doing like uh, uh, doing code wars. You know, it's not just you figuring out the problem. But also learning from other people's solutions and kind of like seeing the differences because sometimes those differences can help like ha help show you that certain assumptions you made 
don't actually apply. Again, like I, I assume that the, that I had to convert to the string object because I needed that toString method, but apparently that toString method does ex or the parse method does exist on string pointers. So that all is well and good. So my name is Alex from Set from Alex from Set Coder. Have a great day and enjoy.